Don Garber, uh, first of all, massive congratulations on the League's Cup, the newly formatted League's Cup. I think uh, there's been complexities, there's been conversations about many things, but I think overall, I feel anyway that it's been a success. I, but I would love your own assessment as we now have the final uh, Inter Miami Nashville. How would you assess this League? You know, Cup? so far, year one and a smashing success. You think about the fact that there is no other league anywhere in the world that has uh, pitted two border-connected professional soccer leagues together uh, in a competition to sort of, you know, determine who really is the king of the road here. Uh, there's been some unbelievable matches. There's been enormous excitement, and it's just year one. So imagine what our future holds. We have Copa next year. We have the Club World Cup in 25. We have the World Cup in 26, and we have our League's Cup, this unique competition that has gotten off to an unbelievable start. So to that point, how would you expect, or I guess in a better way to phrase it, what is your own expectation of the next years to come? Not just for MLS, not even just for the relationship with Liga MX, but your own vision as, as how this keeps developing. Because when I talk to Lionel Messi, and we'll get to him in a moment, I promise, he, I asked him about the growth of the game here, and you know, and, and he said, "I think there is tremendous potential in so many ways, but ultimately it's down to the league." H how do you see that, specifically as these tournaments that you're talking about? Well, in the let me start with uh, with League's Cup. Mm. Uh, you know, we believe we and and uh, and Liga MX that Concacaf, our region, ought to be as strong as any regional confederation anywhere in the world. The sport is popular here; it's very valuable, as you know. The rest of the world almost kind of looks at this market as uh, its biggest you know, untapped opportunity. And the future of the League's Cup is going to be a closer and closer alignment with uh, clubs in Mexico. Think about what that could mean from a promotion and marketing and player development and fan development uh, perspective. So we have great, great hopes for the future. Uh, you know, I, I listened, like all of you, at, uh, at Leo's uh, first press conference, and there were so many things that came out of that uh, that really impressed me with his belief in our league, with his desire to just play, to, to do what he can, not to be an ambassador for Major League Soccer, but really somebody who can be an ambassador for the game, to show all the potential opportunity here in the United States and with Major League Soccer. Uh, now it is up to us. You know, every year for 27 plus years now, Luis, we continue to defy the odds. We built stadiums before they were even thought of. We've developed new ways to attract the best players in the world, like, you know, like Messi. We've created tournaments that are unprecedented, like Leaks Cup. We continue to invest in player to development and MLS Next, MLS Next Pro and our first teams. And you think about all that energy and all that momentum. And now we have the best player in the game in all time saying he believes that MLS could be one of the top leagues in the world. And his goal really is maybe it could be the top, top of the heap. Just a matter of time and, and, and proper focus and investment. To that point, do you think that in order for that to continue, does there need to be, I guess, a reassurance that the, you know, MLS continues to develop both because I've always thought that MLS is at its absolute strongest when you obviously you bring these superstars, but also these communities, these clubs are nurturing their own talent and then it becomes a transactional league, right? right? Where other places from all over the world are saying, I want me some of that from that MLS. And do you think how important is it to make sure that Yes, we get these Messies, but there's only one Messi, clearly. Yeah. But we get these superstars, but also these clubs all over the country and Canada, of course, continue to develop this talent that goes the other way as well. You know, it's really about what's under the hood, right? It's great to have a beautiful car and to, and to have everybody sort of look at this flashy uh, vehicle you have. But it's what takes place under the hood that really matters. When you think about the change in... MLS from being a 100% or nearly 100% buyer's league to now being balanced between buying and selling, which is the, really the DNA of any professional soccer league anywhere in the world. Uh, that's what's really driving our future. There's something interesting about Messi's arrival. I think we all saw it coming, right? His absolute popularity, the growth, the demand 
to watch him. And at the same time, with that popularity, there's also the responsibility, I guess, of other clubs making sure that they're ready for when they host Inter Miami in the future. How does that work to you, in your opinion, like moving on? For example, when the New York Red Bulls host Inter Miami for his first MLS league match and moving forward, is that the, fully the responsibility of the club? Does the does the league help in, in many ways? Because obviously Messi's not like any other player. His, his you know arrival comes with a lot of yeah, demand. You know, the Red Bulls are a great example. I've been to Red Bull games where mm. this stadium was was sold out. The playoff games and when they were at their at their best, that the team was relevant throughout the the New York metropolitan area. They need that back. And if this game coming up next weekend can provide them with an opportunity to to get folks to come back into that stadium, it is still one of the great stadiums in Major League Soccer. It's a club that's made our play, uh, playoffs year in and year out. It is the responsibility of the local clubs to build their fan base. The league is not going to tell them what to do when, when somebody else comes to town. I know what I would do if I was a coach or a general manager, or if I was the president of a club, and I heard uh, Jim Curtin say this in Philadelphia, come here and support your team. And, yeah, it would be nice to, to see somebody else wearing that pink jersey, and that might be a special moment. But that was an opportunity for the Philadelphia Union uh, to you know, be on the, the way to winning another trophy. So uh, the league isn't going to mandate these kinds of things, Luis. It's really up to our teams. Let's go back to the League's Cup. Uh, every single team, Liga MX, MLS, took part. It was definitely a success from a continental perspective. Is there anything that you would want to improve? Uh, as we look ahead to 2024, 2025. You know, it's year one of what should go on for many, many years. So there's so many things that we need to look at. We need to look at sort of the, the competitive format. You know, are we providing the Mexican clubs with the, the right opportunity to be able to capture the interest of their local fans? Because as you know, there are a league of Mex fans everywhere in every city in America, certainly in our soon to be 30 markets. So I don't see any reason why those can't be as much a home game as it is uh, the perception that they're visiting. We have to take a look at the calendar. We've got to continue to see where does the competition fit in with so many other things that are going to be going on over the next couple of years. And certainly, we'll work with CONCACAF on so many of the other operational things and whether that's officiating or anything else, which, by the way, I think was much better than I think the officials got credit for, by the way. So ultimately, these are all things that we're going to do in the off season and sit down with uh, my counterpart, uh, Mikel Ariola, and think about what the future is going to hold for us. Final question, Don. Messi's here. The league is thriving. League's up was great. Who do you want next year? <laughs> <laughs> the league doesn't. <laughs> it's great. And as, as you know, the, the Messi deal is a partnership between, between the league and the club and a number of our different partners. And I don't think you get the, the player uh, who to this day is, is, is one that I think will thrill and inspire and be that sort of special experience for anybody who's going to attend a game. Uh, we'll look at what we can do to continue to attract some of the best players in the world. But I'm going to go back to your first question. It is about the foundation. It is about the core of what we are embedded in our community. It's not just about that, uh, that great moment to see a special player. We've had great players in the history of our league. We've had Zlatan, we've had David Beckham, we have Carlos Vela, we've had Lampard and Gerard and David Villa, we've had Terry Henry, we have such be so many great players in the history of our league. It's not just about that one player, it's about how do you feel about your club and can that player perhaps give you something that uh, might make it a little bit more special. Well, the first article, the first feature that we did here about Messi was exactly about what you talked yeah. about, that community, that thriving, specifically Latin American community. And I think the League's Cup, MLS, and the relationship with Liga MX does that very, very well. Don Garber, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Luis. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.